Hey guys, welcome back to Build It TV. My name is Rob and today we are testing out 3D printed parts, specifically dimple dies. I've had a 3D printer for about six months now and I've loved the learning curve and experience of owning it. Um, you can, if you want to, do it in the most basic form where you can just download files off a of Thingiverse and, and print them and you know, that's cool, but you still need to know a little bit about the filaments you're gonna use and things like that. Uh, and then it leads you really into wanting to design stuff yourself if you think about things. And you might want to use things like Tinkercad to uh, make your own stuff uh, for basic stuff. Or for like me, for example, I've most recently just moved up to Fusion 360 to just up my game in what I can build. But also expand my knowledge on CAD as well. It's funny, as an adult, I take these things in a lot better, uh, and absorb them a lot better, and I think of practical uses that I can use for them, so it relays to me a bit more. Um, if you tried to teach me this as a kid, I'd be like, meh. Um, but like I said, really enjoyed the experience, and wanted to test something like this and the practical uses of it in a workshop. So dimple dies. They are the cool looking pressed holes that you will most often see at the edges of roll cages and things like that. The idea of it is to take a flat bit of metal, which would generally curve quite easily, and put a shape into it so that you've got a more rigid surface. Um, and that's what this little tool does. This one, I 3D printed, this is straight off of Thingiverse, I'll put the link down below, and I printed it at 100% infill, so that means this is completely solid, um, there is no gaps and whatnot in the internals of this. It's quite simple, it even tells you what bolt to use through it, um, you could use this in a press if you wanted to, but I'm, you know, like most um, hobbyists, if you will, I don't have a press here yet, so we're going to use a nut and bolt, some big washers, and clamp it down there. The idea of this test is to see what thickness of metal you can get to, so I'm just going to start at some thin stuff, build my way up until uh, we either break this or we win at dimple dies and everything has dimple dies in it. I've decided to do more than one hole in each one just to test it out because, you know, chances are it might work well once, but you're going to want to use it several times. So I'm going to do three holes in each version of the metal um, and see how it looks. We've got the metals prepped and on the bench and we're going to work our way up. So we've got a 0.5mm thick mild steel, a 1.2 mild steel, a 1.5 stainless, a 1.5 mild steel and a 2mm mild steel. Now you can see how confident I am, I haven't even drilled the holes yet in the 2mm one because I think we're going to run out before we get there. I think probably we're going to end up deforming our die or something like that. But I hope I'm proved wrong. Also, I didn't want a chance ruining my hole saw on the uh, on the thick metal. But um, we are set to go. So what I'm going to do is I've got this, a nut and bolt, and two big square washers. I'm going to whack a spanner on one end. I'm going to whack the Dewalt impact driver, probably on setting one or two, uh, not on full pelt, on the other side. And uh, then we're going to see. So let's start with this one. This could be our our baseline, our test piece. Uh, being the thinnest.
Okay, first dimple is done, and I've got to say uh, that looks real nice and even and smooth. I mean, it looks just like if you'd used a, a metal die, so all good, but we are on the 0.5 mil, so who knows what's gonna happen next, but uh, doesn't seem to be any damage on the, on the die itself, so uh, I'm gonna crack on and do the other ones of those, then we can move up to the next. So next up is the 1.2 mil mild steel. This is the one I'm probably most interested in because this is generally the sort of material you'd use for gusseting on a roll cage or something like that. So if you can't do this, it's probably not particularly useful in an engineering uh, environment. Um, we've gone and done the other three on the 0.5 mil and the dies held up really well. The only scoring you can see on here is from the cuts because they are from a, a hole saw, they're not 100% accurate. And if anything, I think probably the hole saw's a little bit too small. It's, it's, the, it's a 38 mil, which is inch and a half, which is what this is, but it's just very tight fitting on there. So, um, as you can see, with that. So let's give this one a go. Okay, well, other than the uh, material bowing, which I think is to be expected when you're doing a dimple die, unless you've got it held in somewhere, that's a pretty nice, neat press. So uh, I'm gonna crack on and do the other two. Okay, side by side, this is our 1.2 here. Uh, and if anything, it looks like it's formed even better. Um, I think the, the thickness of it probably suits the die a bit better. The die itself is holding up pretty well. There's a couple of marks on it, but nothing to, to worry about. If anything, I would say actually the washers I'm using are probably uh, not holding up as well. <laughs> Um, so I might try and find some thicker ones of those, but yeah, all good. So the next test is 1.5 mil. So I'm going to crank it up a notch and uh, see how we get on. Okay, so that looks really good. Um, we did sustain, we did, we did sustain some damage, um, but I actually don't think it was the die's fault. I think the washer pulled in a bit, and that's probably because the bolt that I've got has a bit of play in here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this out back to the right size and find a bolt that is actually uh, a you know a complete fit and some washers that might do a bit of a better job. So hold tight. We did have to crank the gun up to three for that one as well, uh, but I don't know how much of that was to do with this pulling in. Version 2.0, beefier bolt, beefier washers. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I like that. That's a good, uh, good finish, bit of residue off of this, but uh, Looks pretty damn good. Okay, so while you guys were staring at your phone, I cracked on and did both the 1.5 mils. So this is the stainless and this is the mild steel. And because uh, I thought, well, they're probably gonna have roughly the same effect anyway, and I was right, they did. Um, both worked absolutely perfectly though. So our die is starting to look a little worse for wear, but I mean, it's still perfectly functional. It's done 12 dimples so far and uh, it's holding up all right. So I suppose, 
I suppose I best get to uh, drilling some holes in this two mil. Okay, so two mil mild steel. Um, I've drilled it out. Actually, the uh, the tool station set. What's it called? Abrax cobalt. Hole saws are actually pretty impressive, and they chewed through that pretty quickly. Uh, I've then cleaned up the surface and also filed the edges just to get a nice clean burr. The only difference I'm going to have with this one is one, I'm going to have it clamped down on the bench, and two, I'm going to be wearing all the safety gear because, well, I, th I think something's going to explode, if I'm honest. But um, let's have a look. <laughs> Well, nothing exploded, and I mean, technically, we have a dimple die in it, but it's pretty deformed, it's pretty shallow, and well, it's just not meant for it. As soon as the strength of the metal overcomes the strength of the PLA, it just, uh, it just won't work. So, I think we've squished down that middle bit of the PLA here a bit too much. That's the whole point of this test, to see where the boundaries are of what you can do. Personally, I think it's went really well. I think if you're gonna do 1.2 mil, you could probably do it all day. As you saw from the results, we've got some pretty good presses out of that dimple die. And I think if we hadn't taken it up to the two mil, then we could reuse that die over and over and over. Um, I think that was just too much for it to handle. But on a 1.2 or even a 1.5, I think you could run that thing for, you know, a good long time and I love the fact that it's come from 3d printing first when 3d printing came out people were using it to build stuff themselves now they're using it to build stuff to be able to build other stuff um, as molds and things like that and that's a really good concept and a really good um, thought process to go through for building any project I think where this product really comes into its own is for your hobbyists and people who want to do a bit of metal work but don't want to invest all the money into a full dimple die set to give you an idea, an inch and a half dimple die from a reputable manufacturer, the cheapest I could find was 70 pounds plus postage. That dimple die there, granted I'm taking out the cost for the printer and things like that, because that's really made its money back anyway. If I go for filament, then I use CC tree filament and a one kilogram roll is 20 pounds. That uses around about 150 grams of it. Um, so if I were to work it out, it cost me about three quid to make the dimple die. The bolts and the washers, well, you know, if you have to go out and purchase them, fair enough, but they happen to be stuff I had here in the unit already, so they didn't cost me anything. So we are literally, even if you had to go out and buy the bolts and washers, we're looking at 10% of the cost of a full dimple die for that size. Because of the way you download the file, you can actually change the size of the dimple die to whatever you want. So you could change it to a 32 mil or whatever you want for the specific job and reprint it. So you could print yourself a full die set and obviously the nut and bolt and washers you can reuse for each one. Uh, you could print yourself a full you know, dimple die set for whatever job you're doing and it still only cost you maybe 20 quid. Um, I think that's an absolute, uh, absolute bonus and uh, I'm really chuffed with how it's come out. So uh, although we tested it to destruction, I will definitely be printing another one and I will be using it on the Drift 180. Right, thanks for watching guys. And if you found this information helpful, please do hit the like button. Please do hit subscribe because we'll be doing more 3D print engineering tool tests soon. And uh, if you fancy copying yourself a t-shirt, then click the first link down below and all the details are there. Catch you soon. Hey guys, if you're interested in seeing the sort of projects that I'm going to use these tools on, then please click one of the videos above. Uh, it really helps me out if you click through to another one of my videos and you might see some cool content on my 180SXs, as well as other 3D print tests that we're going to be doing. See you soon.